Now, for those of you who don't remember all the details on the Jazz that we've already shown you in terms of styling, let's get into some of those elements because what's nice about this car is that individual elements are really very contemporary and yet the overall look is like the previous Jazz, the overall profile. But that doesn't matter to us in India because we never had that car. Let's get started. First up, the way the name Jazz has been written, it is jazzy if you're going to allow me that uh, little bit of a stretch because, well, it is. It's nice and funky. It gives an impression of youth. And even the old uh, Jazz had, you know, a J with a big red dot on it. It looked nice, but this is nice too. The tail lamp cluster, again, very modern. And uh, it's not just the two colors that separate it. It's also the way these ridges have been designed. This is for an aerodynamic flow of the uh, wind when you're driving. But, like I said, it also looks nice. You've got the round element and, of course, these... Uh, finished in white versus the red. So overall, big, chunky, grabs your attention. So does the rear of the car because that's again nice and wide and gives you the impression of good space. And that is perhaps the biggest USP the Jazz is going to have over the other hatches in our market right now. When you look at the car, you get the feeling of space. It's nice and big. It's not too tall, but it's nice and big. And uh, remember even the Ritz that, you sh that we showed you a few days ago, just a few weeks ago, right after the C-pillar, the car pretty much ends. In this case, you've got a little bit of an extension. It gives you that feeling, that, all right, you've got boot space in this one. Same thing with the wheelbase, as I mentioned. Cargo space, as well as uh, cabin space, seem pretty ample then. Now, as you come around the side, you start to notice that the front uh, pillar is really raked down. It's also very slim, and that, that's been done to try and give you more visibility, so that when you're driving, you have a greater greenhouse effect, which is why you've got a huge windscreen. You've also got a, a huge quarter glass as well, which is a little bit different to what we've seen on many cars. And, um, of course, as you come to the front, the front just suddenly disappears on you because there isn't too much in terms of uh, the hood space. It's a nice compact hood. It also angles downwards very sharply. You've got a ridge that forms in the center of the uh, hood, which is nice, contemporary looking, and, of course, a massive headlamp cluster. Again, typically Honda, take a look at this little element that bulges outwards. You started seeing that on many Hondas, isn't it? So the parking light actually sort of bulges out and is not flush with the rest of the headlamp. So that's nice and different. Down here, the bumper is pretty sporty. You can get fog lights that will, of course, get inserted right there. But uh, this version doesn't have them right now. It's not standard, basically. Uh, in the front, it's also not standard to get a body-colored front grille, which you can get done at the dealer end because you've got different variants. And uh, that kind of complements the overall Honda styling, you know, just like you have on the CRV or even on the Civic, that sort of a element, or like the new Accord, the Inspire version. But otherwise, of course, the grille is typically Honda and looks like the, like the kind of Hondas we've seen of late, including the Accord. Huge Honda logo in the front. And so, really, in terms of the overall package, it's contemporary, it's modern, it grabs your attention because of the size and shape of it. But the overall styling is such that it's either going to be something you really like because of the modern appeal, or it's going to seem a little bug-like to you. And uh, that's perhaps uh, for you to decide whether you like it or not, purely subjective. The car looks fresh and feels exactly like the ones we've seen overseas, but under the hood, it's a different story. The Indian Jazz carries an all-new 1.2-litre iVTEC engine specially developed for launch here. It has very healthy specs on paper, doesn't it? Honda says that India will get an automatic transmission option in about a year. So the big question is, how does the car drive? Off we went on Goa's scenic highways to find out. Steering mounted controls are becoming pretty much standard across the hatch space. That's great news and, uh, well, I can tell you they're standard on the Jazz as well. Now, when you talked about the Jazz for so many months, the fact that it's coming to India, we all knew that. We all knew it's coming with a 1.2 litre engine just for India. And the big question was, won't that be underpowered, considering that the car has a 1.5-litre engine in most markets? Well, I can tell you, it's been a few kilometres now, and my first impression, it's not underpowered. 